Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show, we're talking about TV shows and adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Arrow. Another great episode. Um, I'm loving this continuation of The Divided Team. I do love that it is an issue that isn't like 100% resolved. It's like, oh, we'll take you back. Because even like you take something, like as an example that was brought up, it's like no matter how much this team kind of might have screwed up in their own way, the fact of the matter is Oliver's kind of made betrayals in the past. The fact is Diggle lied about like his whole like situation to Oliver this season so it's not like this team isn't like completely clear on all fronts but it's like during season four it took a little while for Diggle to kind of welcome Oliver back because it was like yeah you kidnapped my wife and everything I didn't appreciate that yeah it might have been part of a plan but you didn't let any of us in on it so there's fault in that so it's kind of a similar situation of like the fact and it's something that the, uh, the other members of the team Renee uh, Curtis as well as Dinah hit on us the fact of the matter is like they didn't want to realize their fault in this situation. It's like you want to point fingers at us, blame us for everything. The fact of the matter is, and something they ultimately agree on is like, ultimately, it was, it was blame all across the board. Even Oliver later on kind of recognizes, but he was super stubborn about it. And it's like, I can't say I don't, I don't know who I side with. You side with both of them because you realize both sides of them. I tend to lean a little more with Oliver because Oliver needed to do what he did. But it is that situation of like, well, the fact of the matter is, even when it was all said and done, you still kind of chose Team OG Arrow versus Team New Arrow. Because rather than it just being this being Team Arrow, there was the division amongst ranks. It's like, oh, Felicity and John 100% have your loyalty, but we as a new, newbies, we don't. It's like no matter everything we've been through, it still wasn't enough. It's kind of what makes that situation mid Saturday. They came together, you know, Oliver came to the island to save all of them. You know, to Leah and you to protect everybody, but ultimately, you know, it's like what well, hasn't changed the fact is what he did. He went behind their backs. I feel like it's a betrayal that should be able to be forgiven, but it's like the problem is the bond of trust is broken. It's like how can we work together when we don't trust each other? It's like oh, we'll exchange information. Especially, I wasn't expecting them to find out at all about James, like like Kate and James, the whole manipulation of them. It's like oh yeah, like having the place bugged and finally tell the team. I was wondering if they were going to tell them, too. It's like, oh, yeah, how long did you find out about this? It's like 24 hours. It's like you've been sitting on this for like 24 hours and you would tell us. And the fact of the matter is, because the ultimate question is, too, is like, what is he going to do? The fact of the matter is, like, he's had their identities for months, you know? So, and once again, like, the whole, like, Oliver's face being leaked out, like, it's all small things. It's small little jabs at Oliver so that he can eventually topple Oliver for whatever reason because at first he said it before like his son died by Oliver's hand that's something we still haven't gotten back to yet why he hates Green Arrow why he hates Oliver so much he says Oliver killed his son maybe it was back in the day when Oliver was doing the vigilante thing much like uh Adrian Chase not less that's what that's all about which not less Adrian Chase is his son which if it, that can't be the case because Adrian's dad not less like Adrian was his biological son, and the man that Adrian thought was his biological dad was actually his adopted dad, or something like that. That's the only way I see that now, not unless it's another character from, like, far back that we don't know about, or it's a character that we haven't been, in, you know, that we knew back then, but just haven't, like, it's been such a long time, like, I've forgotten, or maybe most people have, or like I said, we just haven't been introduced to yet, but nevertheless... I really wasn't expecting them to find out, like, oh, we're being bugged and everything in this episode. So that was kind of an interesting twist. It was also interesting the way they found out about it was because they interference. I thought, because at first they're like, oh, it must be something else. Don't worry about it. But it went off again. I was like, oh, they, they know they're being bugged this time. So that was kind of interesting. So... Like I said, what is the ultimate plan? Like, you can't take... Because even he's... Like, cause even the rest... Even, like, Ricardo's like, you let him go. Like, you're smart, but that had to be, like, one of the dumbest things because he let Oliver get away. But it's like, well, Oliver will face his punishment in due time. And I'm like, what is that? Because for him, it's like... I am guess it's kind of similar to Adrian, where it's like, I want to destroy everything. Destroy his relationship with his son. Because all the stuff is circumstantial at this point about Oliver being the Green Arrow. At least media-wise. Like, Agent Watson has her evidence and stuff like that. But overall, it's kind of like, nope, there's no actual 100%. There's speculation and rumors, but no one knows 100% sure that um, Oliver Queen is a Green Arrow. Slash all the different vigilantes that 
happened up in the past. I think it's most of focused on Green Arrow, not all the vigilantes that have been in the past with the hood and everything. But nevertheless, uh, I will give props to Oliver for handling as much of them as he could. Like, he had that whole trap set up, and he handled it pretty well, even though he was up against Siren. I kind of felt bad for her, like, both times. Like, he kind of tangled her up. First, it was her throat. She got that thing wrapped around her throat and slammed against the wall. Second time, her legs, and then she fell for you. First, uh, face first into the corner that cement like that. I was like, ooh, that that sucks. But going up against Vigilante uh, and like Ricardo's man taking them down pretty um, amazingly. And it's like, he did, that was surprising. Like, you're literally up against, against uh, what, a team of what, six villains? And you took like a good chunk of them down by yourself like that? I think that's pretty impressive. I mean, even then, sadly, he's still not facing the full army because it's not like... Um, Anatoly brought all his people, nor did Ricardo bring all his people, so. I kind of feel bad for Jerry. Um, I was thinking maybe that was part of his plan, that he was going to point the gun at Oliver. I thought last second, maybe he didn't, like, I just thought in my head, I was like, oh, maybe he's going to kill himself, because that way he can ensure that his daughter stays alive or something. I mean, he ended up betraying Oliver, but ultimately it was kind of like, um... He was like, well, the fact of the matter is, Caden was like, well, the fact is you didn't betray us. You came back around at the end. We won't kill your daughter now. Which is like, the fact is that I was still on the table just kind of shows you how Caden is. It's just kind of like, uh, you're willing to do whatever it takes, I guess. It's always interesting when you have villains willing to cross whatever the line. They're pissed at you for one particular reason, but like the fact of the matter is you're willing to cross that line, too. It's like, you're up here about sons and stuff like that. Well, what about your situation? You're about to kill someone, threatening to kill someone's daughter and stuff like that. But it's like, oh, we're, we're super villains. We're evil. We don't care about that stuff like that. I guess that's just kind of like that comic book world of like, yeah, we're, we're bad people. We say we're bad people. We're bad people. We don't have a conscience. We don't feel bad for doing what we do, you know, so... Well, it was also interesting, the fact is that now Dinah knows about um, Vince, which it seems like that is going to affect him. Like, he, he talks to Kaden about it at the end of the episode, like, no, 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 I know exactly what buttons to push. So I think even though he was playing her, he was playing her because he didn't want her mixed up in all this. I think he wanted to keep her kind of off balance and out of this situation so that when it was all said and done, like, maybe they could have a future. I think his heart is still there. Um, cause that kind of comes up as a conversation for like Laurel because you have, uh, Thea talking to um, Lance about it. Cause Lance is like, he still can't let this whole Laurel thing go. And cause for him, it's still that aspect of like, he's seen there is some good in her cause she's let him go. She's kind of shown kindness in the past. So it's there. It might not pop up all the time, but it's still there somewhere deep inside. There's a good Laurel. And it's like if, in him, it's like, if I don't try and reach that goodness if i don't do my best i'm going to look back on it and regret it because it'll be like i'm losing laurel all over again but it was something that um thea also brought up is like you might not care about your own life but don't forget you still got another daughter out there you know sarah so i mean that's the question too is like sarah hasn't crossed paths with earth to laurel yet so i'm curious to know what she would think about it you know because Sarah's kind of had to bury her feelings a lot with the whole like situation around Laurel not being able to do everything she wants to she would want to be able to do just for the sake of keeping time and everything intact space and time intact but um it's like I wonder how would she react to the whole fighting Laurel thing would it matter to her would it not like would she be able to kind of separate her or would she kind of be like Lance where it's like I mean the fact of the matter is it is a different relationship it's like that's that's from a, that's a sisterly bond so maybe she could look past it but this is like from a father who's lost his children way too many times you know, he's lost Sarah like twice and got her back and lost Laurel this one time. And that one time was enough to take her away forever. There was no coming back for her. But now it's like that. He has that second chance with Laurel like he has had with Sarah, you know. So there's that whole situation to it. You know, you have to think about. But ultimately, Thea turns her, like, her back on it because it's like, you know, and the fact is that like she changes her mind because it's like my dad. Kind of a scummy dude. He's kind of a pretty bad dude over the course of the series. He's had his moments, but especially last season on Lee and you, he was willing to sacrifice his life to help out with this whole situation. He came to the, with Oliver to save all of us, you know, plus like whole, that whole mind situation, which I'm not still not convinced Merlin's dead, but hey, maybe he is. We'll just kind of have to wait and see on that. I still think that's... Cause like I say, there's still way many more people on Lee and you with that whole Lee and you situation that we don't know where they stand, you know? Um, a lot of the, like some of the bad guys as well as the good guys. So, like the example of uh, Nissa and Talia, we still have no idea about them. But 
You get what I mean. Ultimately, in this episode, too, we also had the team coming together to, well, Renee, Curtis, and Dinah starting their own team. Interestingly enough, using Helix's old um, hideout as their own. But what if, um Still, I know the question I kept bringing up this season, too. Like, what happened to the rest of Helix? The only person we've met is um, Helena. She's, like, the only person from Helix we've met besides Caden. But, like, after everything happened, like, it's, are the people on Caden's side part of Helix? Still, Helix is working with him behind the scenes? Or the Helix scatter afterwards after they, like, disappeared back in season five? I don't remember. I mean, I don't, I don't know, you know? So that does beg the question. It seems like uh, Caden's kind of all on his own, not unless he wiped out the rest of the team just so he can do what he's doing now. And there's an aspect that kind of, like, the fact is they're like, oh, we're toasting. We got a team that we can finally trust. I immediately go, something's going to come up, like, that's going to end up causing distrust. I feel like that's foreshadowing that even more. But I guess it's just supposed to kind of put, like, the nail even deeper in the coffin for Team Arrow. It's kind of what that's supposed to be. Because, like, Curtis brought up an interesting point because it was like, Caden didn't break up this team. Basically, how this team operates broke this team. Caden just pulled at the the strings that were already there, like these little things, these little fragile mom, like fragile marks in this team, these little punctured holes. He just tapped on what was already there. The fact is that Oliver kind of runs this team like, oh, wanting to be 100% obedient. You follow my rules, but then at the same time, it's like, well, you. You follow me 100%, don't deviate, but at the same time, I can change it, follow my own rules. So, you know, that aspect to it and just like the fact is not trusting them enough, not talking to them, just doing a lot of stuff behind their backs, you know, which you do have Felicity kind of getting pissed. I did like that with the first talk because it's like mom and dad, that being John and all of, I mean, John and um Felicity being like, hey. Yo, like, you're the ones who done stuff wrong, but then Dinah being like, you're not willing to look at yourselves, which later on, like I said, they're able to kind of look in hindsight, especially Oliver, because it's like, for him, it's like, you were doing what you did needed to do for your daughter, you know, the whole question, the whole situation of like, well, family comes first, it's like, well, at the same time, it's like, yeah, it's always your blood and everything, but there's also the aspect of like, and it's something that you kind of treated it, you're like, these people are your friends, which I also, I still will go back and say, it's super effed up that he said that at, like, you know, uh, as a toast, considering the fact that he was at the same time stabbing Oliver in the back, you know, at the same time, so it's like super messed up. But um, it's also the fact is that um, because the fact of the matter is, Team Arrow is kind of like a family too. But it's like uh, there's that whole situation because I guess that's another way of looking like well, the betrayal cut even deeper because we are kind of like a family, and you you broke this family. Um, so Oliver surprisingly was just like, okay, you guys do what you need to do. I understand that you want to go your separate ways. You want to make your, hey, I wish you the best of luck. Um, Dig does seem like he is back because of the chip and everything, so that's good. I am curious to see what that means, though, because even then, Oliver's still outmatched. It's like the teams will probably operate separately. They might exchange information. That might still be something they do going forward, but they are going to be their own teams. And all I can say is that might mean that going forward, Oliver might start recruiting some help from some people maybe we haven't seen in the show for a while or, you know, said people from the island wondering, like, oh, where they are. I don't know necessarily anyone else in particular who would take up this battle with him. I mean, I guess he could ask other people for help, but at the same time, I was like, all right, he can't ask Barry for help because Barry's in a whole world of, like, hurt right now himself. The legends are all time traveling right now, so there's that whole situation, too. And then, um, Supergirl's on another Earth, so ain't no help from there. I mean, I guess Vixen, once again, I still have to watch the Vixen. I keep putting that off. I need to watch that, but I, I guess she'd be, like, the closest person he could get from help, but I don't know if that's something they do right now. Um, I don't. Th I don't think she's ever. She's popped up like subsequently once since her first her first popping up live action wise in season four. I think mean, it was like you know in Legends. It's kind of like because there was like security footage of her fighting. That's like the next thing we've seen of her like live action wise. But nevertheless, um, so it's like what will Oliver do with Team Arrow going forward? Will it just be him and Diggle for a while or what? Because. You know, Thea wants to help out too, but it's like, you know, she's still not back at on 100%. And I'm not sure she'd be really w ready to kind of put up the Red Hood again. Um, I am curious about that, though, too. Like, about the whole Speedy situation. Will she ever don that, or will someone else take up that spot? You know, like, you know, Roy's not 
necessarily coming or well, not coming back. He might pop up or something like that, but it's like it's not going to be like a permanent thing. So I wonder is Oliver going to find a permanent um, replacement for like? Are we going to get a new new team arrow or not? Like I think ultimately it's going to be him coming back together with uh, the new team of Curtis. Uh, Dinah and Renee, whatever they call themselves, but still it does beg the question like what that whole scenario is going to be about. I actually skipped over it earlier when I could have brought it up, but um, they did find out that um, Renee's identity was given to Watson most likely. The, the running theory is like Caden got it from like the recordings and then sent it to her to kind of use her, um, have her kind of use him as leverage. The question is too is like Watson isn't questioning where this is coming from too because it's that situation of like you're so focused on the bad guys that are in front of you, you don't know about the war that's being waged right now in Star City, which once again kind of raised my question to like the validity of is she here to be a good guy or a bad guy, you know, so I don't know. I think it's a little suspicious, but maybe it's just because it's like, you know, why why this fight? It like it, that still also comes down to whether or not she's a good person, but it's like why are you trying to stand on this particular fight, this battle? I mean, let's not forget cuz vigilantes are super against being against publicly because like that bill went through and it was because Caden circulated that video of them beating up uh, what were people believed were cops were actually just bad guys dressed as cops, but still. Also, what it means for Oliver going forward with the whole Renee, I mean, not Renee, um, William situation. I mean, it's actually kind of interesting because now that, um, Dig is back to being full on, um, back at possible full strain. We'll just kind of have to wait and see that he's fully, fully back next time. But he could put on a hood, but at that same time, it wouldn't change the fact is that Oliver would still need backup, so. That Diggle would need backup from Oliver anyway, so... But you know that situation is going to get more complicated. I'm sure Caden's going to use the whole William situation. He probably knows that William is like, you know, Oliver's kryptonite, essentially. I know that, that dude Jerry also made that reference. He was kind of like, oh, you need like a sigil in the sky, like some big light, maybe an arrow in the sky. I was like, I love... Is Batman the only one that does that in retrospect? I don't think any other superhero has like a symbol in the sky like that. I think that's only a Batman thing, at least to my knowledge. Once again, asterisk. I don't know comic books, so but like that's always been a staple with Batman because that's how Gordon always gets in contact with him. But like I don't think any other superhero has something like. I mean, just maybe there's some other means, but usually, I mean, even amongst the shows, it's like, oh, how do most people find out? It's like, well, they tap into police scanners. That's kind of how they find out about crimes and stuff like that. Overall, a great episode. I'm very interested to see how all of this goes about uh, continuing forward. Um, especially this new team that's uh, being formed. I'm curious to find out the name and their their logo and everything. Oh, and speaking of logos, I couldn't help but notice it because I actually, like, I was watching it online and I had to rewatch, uh, rewind I'm glad I happened to be rewatching it. But it's like, when you look at the logos at the beginning, maybe they did, and I doubt they did it last episode, but it was like all the other logos, Renee's, uh, Curtis, and... Dinah's, all their logos were, like, colored in red and then the others, like... Uh, Diggle as Spartan and the Arrow were all green. I thought that was kind of a nice touch, kind of representing like the divide and everything. So, like I said, I'm very interested to see what the next episode has in store for us. But really, that's all I want to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love lights at fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.